Hi there, Sardar here with InfoWorld at IDG. Today in Smart Python, I'm going to introduce one of Python's most powerful and widely used third-party modules, NumPy. By now, you've probably heard how Python is a big fixture in the math and statistics space. You've probably also heard that Python is convenient, if not the fastest language under the hood. So how come people choose Python for math and stats when it's computationally slow? Well, enter NumPy. This is a third-party library that provides accelerated math operations to Python. The actual math is done behind the scenes, as it were, using lower-level languages for speed. One uses Python as a convenience interface to those methods. So you get the best of both worlds. You get Python for its ease of use and its user-friendliness, and you get the machine-level functionality of NumPy for raw speed. But there are limits to where NumPy pays off for your work, and in this example I'll show you how that operates. Let's begin with a simple example. This is a version of the sieve of Eratosthenes, a simple way to find a range of prime numbers. The first function uses pure Python to perform the calculations and uses the set data type native to Python to speed things up a bit. Now, the way it works is, for each number in the range that we want to calculate, we check to see if the number in question is not already in our existing set. If it isn't, the function yields up that number and then changes the set so that any multiples of that number up to our limit are also not to be included. All of this is again done with Python's native functionality for handling numbers. The second function uses NumPy's library functions to accomplish the same things. Many of NumPy's functions revolve around matrix math, creating and manipulating arrays of numbers at high speed. The first thing we do here is we create an array of booleans, ones or zeros, that is the same size as the number of the integers that we want to search. So for 5,000, we created an array with 5,000 members in it. We then follow the same practice as before. We check to see if each number is marked as prime, and if so, mark off all of its multiples as not prime. Because NumPy is designed to deal with matrices of numbers at high speed, this operation happens a lot faster than the pure Python counterpart. Now, if we run both of these, we can see just how much faster we're talking. The first of these, the pure Python version, takes about two one thousandths of a second to complete, which is respectable. But the NumPy version is at least an order of magnitude faster. This is because the most time-consuming manipulations are all handled internally, not in the realm of Python itself. We're just using Python as a kind of command and control system for functionality that we'd otherwise need a language like C++ or Fortran to work with. And Python is far easier to work with than those languages. Now, one key issue with NumPy is that it works best when dealing with machine-level numerical types. This means numbers that the hardware in your machine deals with directly numbers that can be represented by 32 or 64-bit data, like integers and floats. And with integers, these numbers can only be so large or so small. And with floats, there's only so much precision you can have with them. So there are constraints. Python, on the other hand, is a different way to represent numbers internally, one that is not directly compatible with NumPy. With Python, an integer can be unlimited in size. It can have as many digits as you want. A NumPy 64-bit integer is, has an upper bound and a lower bound as well. So while Python gives you a lot more convenience, that convenience comes at the cost of performance. Let me give you an example of how this plays out with NumPy. I have here an example program that creates a list, or an array, of the integers 1 through 5,000. It then finds both the sum and the product of all those numbers in the array. The sum of those numbers is a number that's easily contained in a 64-bit unsigned integer, but the product isn't. It's a number that has 16,000 digits. Now, Python can ha natively handle that number just fine. It just handles it slowly. Now, if I try to use NumPy's built-in product method to compute the product of such an array, I get back nothing. That's because the number in question quickly becomes too big to be handled as a 64-bit integer. What's more, I can't tell NumPy to use a Python-style integer to handle that kind of computation under the hood, at least not that way. What I can do as a fallback is tell NumPy not to use 64-bit integers, but instead use Python integers by way of the object keyword. The downside of doing this is that we lose just about all of our performance improvements for doing so. As you can see in this third example, the performance of the operation is about the same for the pure Python version. And in fact, in this fourth example, I use the same code for generating the product as the pure Python example, and it's not significantly slower than doing things with the prod method using Python objects under the hood. That's because the prod method is falling back under the hood to the Python way of working with numbers, the slow way. So we're not getting any real advantage from using NumPy in this case. So here's the takeaway. NumPy gives you faster math with numbers, 
chiefly in matrices, provided that they are machine level number types like bytes or 16 or 32 or 64 bit integers or floats. But NumPy doesn't give you those improvements in speed when working with Python's own native number types. So you have to choose the tool that fits the job. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the IDG Tech Talk channel on YouTube. And for more Smart Python, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Infoworld.com.